All right. So welcome to the new lecture again. So in today's lecture, so we will revise some of the basic concepts which we've seen in the transformer topic as well as these the machine topics. Then we introduce one more uh, very interesting topic which is very important especially for electronic students. Okay. So here in the transformer, one should observe majorly one of the primary objective of the transformer is to change the level of the voltage from one level to another level. And you should understand specifically what is the purpose of changing the voltage level from V1 to V2. So that like reason we had explained just to refer back again. So to reduce the transmission losses from the generating station to the load center. This is what the load where the power is consumed. So we need to transmit the power at lower current level but higher voltage levels. So in order to achieve such a feature we will be using the transformer. And transformer consists mainly coil and core assembly. The core is this one here I am considering as ideal core which has infinite permeability. That means whatever flux produced by this coil one total flux will be confined within the core. It will not spread out anywhere. That is what the ideal core means. This is what the ideal. Then if such a flux is confined to the core and where the second coil also placed on the same core so that entire flux phi is linking with the coil 2. So this process we call as a mutual induction. Really there is no direct electrical contact between this second side and first side but still we could able to transmit the power or energy from one side to other side. And here the major things which we use in transformer in understanding the principle of operation is Faraday's law. And we seen that the induced EMFs we will get as 4.44 F N1 phi M. And this we got as induced EMF per turn into number of turns of the coil one. So induced EMF per turn is E1 by N1 which is equal to D5 by DT. That means once we know the rate of change of the flux in the core, we can easily predict the induced EMF in the coil one and coil two. Once we know number of turns of each of these coils N1 and N2. That is d5 by dt into n1 is e1, d5 by dt into n2 is e2. That what we seen in the last sessions and we will get these voltages as 4.44 f n pi if it is coil 1 n1 if it is coil 2 n2. If you take the ratio of these two we will get the transformation ratio as n1 by n2 is equal to e1 by e2 which is very important in solving the problem. And one important observation one must make is that in the induced EMF equation which we had written here is it contains or it is a function of the magnetic flux which is the maximum value of the flux. Whereas this induced EMF is the RMS value. Here I had written see this maximum flux is equal to RMS value of the voltage divided by this entire. Just same equation rewritten in different form. And for the ideal case means there is no power loss inside this machine which is a transformer. If I will give some power as an input here that amount of the power must come out of this device which we call as a output. This is what the output P out. So for ideal device for ideal device the input power should be equal to output power. The input power can be written at any instant of time as voltage into current. Output power also can be written as voltage into current. So if we equate these two, we will arrive one more significant important relationship. So which is the voltage ratios to current ratios. Just observe the ratios how it is related. These three equations are very very important which relate induced EMF turns and current. See? 
So this is one of the important device in the electrical system to change the voltage from one level to another. And here one should observe that we are using AC supply. AC supply. So the primary purpose is changing the voltage level from V1 to V2. V1 may be higher or V2 may be higher. Depends on the type of transformer that we discussed as a step up, step up or step down or step down. That means we are changing the AC voltage from lower voltage to higher voltage or higher voltage to lower voltage. So that is the primary objective of this transformer. Okay. So, one more important point you should note is that this device is a stationary device or static device. Static device. There is no moving parts inside this device. As because it is a static device, we will have efficiency very high in comparison to remaining all electrical devices, the transformer efficiency is very high. So, these points you keep in mind in understanding the transformer. Okay? And we seen one more thing that rotating devices, rotating machines, rotating machines in which we seen the basic idea of the energy conversion. So, from one form to another form. There are majorly three forms of energies which we come across in electrical system is electrical, mechanical and magnetic. So, our major conversion process take place from electrical to mechanical or mechanical to electrical through intermediate domain which is magnetic domain. So, if we could able to understand this magnetic system very clearly, now it is easy to convert electrical to mechanical and mechanical to electrical. And here depends on the type of machine, whether it is a generator or motor. If it is a generator, it takes the mechanical power as a input, it produces the electrical power as a output. The vice versa operation takes place for the motor, that motor input is electrical, output is mechanical. Okay? And in machines, what we see majorly is two important elements, one is stationary part which is the stator which contains as like transformer, core and coil assembly. This does not move usually. This is a stationary segment of the machine. And which is mainly responsible for production of the magnetic flux. And you can see here how we generated the magnetic flux. That we taken some cutout of the magnetic system and we placed some coil on these extended poles which we call as projected poles and once we pass some current through this coil high amperes, we know that when conductor carries current definitely it produce the magnetic field. That is what the system stator that coil, core and coil assembly which is responsible for production of the flux. Now the second element is the rotor. rotor it is some kind of structure which supports the conductor to rotate inside this magnetic field. The rotor structure I had described in the previous sessions, you can refer back. And as the title indicates, it is a rotating part, it is not a stationary. And there will be certain mechanism how it rotates, so that you can imagine, so just by looking at the real time system sums. So, this is like when the conductor which is placed on the rotor rotates inside this magnetic field, then it may create some force on the conductor if it is a uh, like a motor, uh, means if it is like uh, let us say generator, we may have some force or if it is motor, we may see, uh, let me say in, in this way, in terms of torques, torque or the induced element. 
torque or the inducing so if it is a generator if it is a generator we will get the induced emf which is equal to so like just i already described here that e g or e b is equal to phi z n phi phi z n p by a phi z n p by a or you can bring some constants left side and variables on the other side like this you can get some constant into the flux into the speed of the machine where k is the constant which is equal to p number of poles z number of conductors divided by number of parallel paths this is induced emf in case of generator and in the same way we will have some expression for the torque in case of motor as constant k into phi into current so this also very important in solving the problem only these two relationship we will see and which are very important and you try to understand every term which is coming inside these expression so that you can do the problem in more efficient way and one of the important topic inside these rotating machines is speed control which you will come across in especially various applications so in, even in your projects also you will come across all these things so one should understand two important way of controlling the speed by looking at the speed expression speed expression contains the voltage and the field flux and as i told you field flux is usually produced by the stator system so we can call this as stator field flux and the voltage is inside the armature which we call as armature voltage so we can control the speed by changing this voltage or changing the flux and one thing you should understand that where are these parameters is it in the numerator or denominator if it is so do we need to increase the voltage to increase the speed or decrease the speed like that you can means depends on the your requirement whether you want to decrease the speed of your machine or increase the speed of your machine then you can vary corresponding parameters which comes as armature control and field flux control or field control and one basic understanding you should make that one is used for the below base speed another is used for the above base speed so that also must be clear for everyone okay so these all what we seen so far i know today let us introduce one more interesting topic which also very important in understanding the uh, simple uh, like applications like in robotics or somewhere like you will definitely come across some situation where you need some different things as like that. so for example you have ac supply then you can change the voltage levels by using your transformer as whatever i had told you previously by changing the number of turns as like this n2 if 230 volts is there but your application is let us say 12 volts then you can change 230 volts to 230 volts ac to 12 volts ac by using transformer but there are certain applications which require which require the dc system i need the dc or we will be dealing mostly with the dc and what the application is that we need the like let us say the output voltage output voltage output voltage to be greater than or less than the input voltage input voltage input voltage sorry input voltage that means as like transformer as like transformer we need to change the level of voltage in the dc system also why because i may require the output required output is either greater than the input or less than the input so what is available for us is input but what is our requirement is greater than the input 
or less than the input. Now, how can I achieve this desired output features in the DC system is by using certain converters. We will not call here as transformer. And one thing you should understand that transformer, transformer does not work, does not work, does not work for, for DC system. You cannot achieve this feature of higher DC voltage or lower DC voltage than the input by using transformer. Why? Because, so once the current is DC, like I is constant, if I is constant, you cannot expect any mutual linkage. Why? Because Faraday's law states that if there is any variation, then only induced EMF is developed, which is D5 by DT. If I is constant, obviously flux also constant. If flux is constant, what will happen is that induced EMF will be zero. Thereby, transformer does not work. This is one of the very important thing that many people will think that why can't we use the transformer to change the voltage level from let us say 230 to 400 volts or 230 to 12 volts. DC, of course, DC. For DC, transformer does not work. So, there should be some other mechanism for this DC. So, that mechanism, what we call here as DC-DC converters. DC to DC converters. DC to DC converters. DC to DC converters. And here, majorly we will see block level of understanding, but I will give some generalized operation also for better understanding. Why? Because you will be using these things very regularly in the projects, so there you should not get any doubts. So, first I will take my required feature as like this. If output voltage, if output voltage, or, or let me, yeah, so output voltage, this is the objective. What is my objective is? Objective is I need the output voltage less than the input voltage. Input voltage. Input voltage. Now can I say if output voltage is less than the input voltage just like the transformer. If output is less than input what we call? That is step down transformer. So here also I can, con I can call this as step down, step down, instead of transformer, I will say converter, converter. This terminology is very important. So, if the output voltage is less than the input voltage, so I will call that as a step down converter, step down converter. And here, more specifically, the DC-DC step down converter is named, is named as buck converter. B U C K buck converter. So let us see the buck converter feature circuit diagram and from the circuit diagram itself we will understand the generalized operation of this converter and you can see what kind of output you will get. Okay. Right. So let me take the buck converter block level diagram that what it contains let me introduce first usually as I told you, it is a DC system. I have DC input voltage. I need what kind of voltage? DC output voltage. But how much? Less than the input. Okay. So, now let me say I have a source. Tell me, this is a DC source whose voltage is let us say Vs. Okay. And what is the output? Output is also DC. But output is across the load, so I am drawing some load symbol. This is, let us say, load. Load. And load output voltage I will be calling as V0. V0. And here, in especially DC system, we will use every time across, across the load one capacitor. Every time. This is standard practice. I will tell you why. Okay. So, we will use one capacitor across the load. 
So this entire thing is load side system. Now see that output voltage is V0. Input voltage is Vs. You can call this as V in also for better understanding. Vi. Input voltage is Vi. Output voltage is V0. Now what is our main motto? Main motto is V0 is less than Vi. This I need to achieve. Remember that this is a DC. DC in output is a DC. Input also DC. So, which is a DC DC converter, but from higher voltage level to lower voltage level, which is a step down converter. Now, what does it contains is that these all buck converters or any kind of DC DC converters majorly play one kind of switching operation for the inductor. So, let me take out the what are the required devices here is that one switch one switch where I can on and off at my required time. Like if I want to switch on for 5 minutes, I can switch it on. Then after that 10 minutes, I want to put it off like that. So, it is in the control that we can switch on and off. And apart from this, we will have one diode here. I will explain every device significance. Just try to understand first. What does it contains? One diode and we will have one inductor here. And this completes the circuit in this way. Now see that majorly what we have is one switch. This is S. S means a switch. One diode D, one inductor L. And this capacitor is part of the load mostly. So, let me give the significance of these things first capacitor. So, usually whenever you have ups and downs in the voltage that can be smoothed. Means the ups and downs can be reduced by using capacitor. That much level just try to understand. Capacitor is used to smooth the output voltage. So, let me write here somewhere, otherwise you will forget. C, what is the purpose of capacitor? To, to smooth out, smooth out output voltage. Smooth out means in what sense? Like if there is any variations, like quick variation in voltage, up, down, up, down, some oscillations. That will be died out. Simply a constant voltage will be produced output voltage to smooth out the output voltage. Next is that let us see the inductor part and the switch part. Now slowly understand the exact the features of this converter and here this switch can be on and off over a certain period. Let us say if T is the time period, T is the time period time period time period in which in which let us say time period let me draw as like this this is some just generalized way 0 and this is the time period in which let us say during on the time interval is a t on so in which the signal is 1 means this is what the on time period and the next is off time period is remaining OFF, off time period. So, T on plus T off together we call as a one complete cycle or time period. That means switch S will be on for T on seconds, off for T off seconds. So, on time plus off time together we call as a one time period. Okay. For example, for example, so the switch may be closed, means on for 2 minutes and off for 1 minute. Okay. So, this is 2 minutes and 1 minute. Total is 3 minutes is the time period in which on time is 2 minutes, off time is 1 minute, like that. Okay. Right. So, now as you see here that the switch may experience two situations. One is on, another is off. 
so when it is on try to observe voltage source is connected to the load side when it is off voltage source input is isolated from the output now let us have the diagram for these two situations so situation 1 case 1 case 1 is t on for t on period for let us say t uh, yeah so on or on state period let us say t on or on state on state so in on state what happens just let me take the active circuit inside this that we will have voltage source which is VI and it is now connected with switch but switch is closed as because it is on state right switch is closed as like this this is what the switch then it is connected to the inductor then it is connected further with the load and capacitor combination this is the load and capacitor combination as like this and the diode will be there but that is not in active state right now it is off state that's why i am putting that in the black color no current is passing through this diode as of now in this state in this state there is no current passing through this device now try to understand the generalized operation of this as like this. This is L inductor. Now once the switch is closed, some current is passing through this in this way. So current through this will be zero either in direction. This is zero current. As because you can see it is in reverse bias. So I hope you can understand this terminology that voltage across the diode is C the negative side is applied with positive voltage so that what we call as a reverse bias so diode is in off state when switch is closed so no current is passing zero amperes okay so next is as current is passing through the inductor wherever current enters that side voltage we treat as a plus with respect to other side and voltage is vl and the load voltage is V0. Load voltage is V0. Now see that clearly what happens is that. So when switch is closed, when switch is closed, how much is the output voltage? How much is the output voltage? So can I write KVL here? See that KVL, KVL, simple KVL minus VI. I started over here, then I am moving in this direction plus VL plus V0 is equal to 0. So V0 is equal to V0 is equal to VI minus VL. V0 is equal to VI minus VI. Is this clear? So the output voltage is equal to input voltage minus inductor voltage. So this much like simple KVL equation, this much yes you try to understand what is the output. This is for on state. In the same way, let us proceed for the off state. Let us proceed for the off state. So for off state, what we get is that switch will be, let me write that case 2, case 2, uh, off state, off state or T off period. That means we splitted this time interval T into two segments. One is on state, another is off state period. Okay. So in off state switch is in open, open condition. So once it is open, what happens is that voltage source is disconnected over here in this way. 
there is no connection now see this is what vi now the remaining things will be there now that will come into picture as like this inductor will be there and apart from that load and this capacitor combination is there load and capacitor combination will be there now interestingly see that once this switch is in open state once switch is in open state what happens is that whatever voltage was there across this let us say a uh, 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 load voltage load voltage remains as v not v not and now previously current was flowing in this direction and there is one interesting property about the inductor is that inductor interesting property is that previous current is something like this current i see you can see before it is open the current flowing through the inductor is left to right now also it still continue in the left to right why because it has certain property that inductor inductor l current does not change inductor current does not change does not change suddenly it does not change suddenly i suddenly switched off but due to my sudden switching action the current does not change its direction all of suddenly that is the property of the inductor so current need to flow in the same direction now in order to maintain the current to be in the same direction one thing should be reversed that is the voltage across the inductor going to be reversed previously this side was positive this side negative now this side becomes positive this side becomes negative this is what vl now as a result of this see that how much is the voltage available from let me say this is some a a and this is some b how much is the voltage between a and b like from here to here here to here is minus vl plus v not so let me write here so vab is equal to minus vl plus v not that means usually this vl is higher so there is a negative voltage between a and b negative means like a side will be negative b side will be positive in that case what happens is that try to see here there was a diode now once we apply for a diode that upper side as a negative lower side as a positive the diode will come into forward bias so now this is what the effective diagram when the switch is in off state when the switch is off so current is passing means these red color ones are the active network this got disconnected no current is passing through the source there is no significant effect of the source okay so now try to see here that how much is the output voltage under this condition how much is the output voltage under this condition if you see voltage across the diode as some voltage let me write as vd usually usually the diode voltage drop is negligible it is a zero approximately zero and or it may be in the cut in voltage like 0.7 for the silicon 0.3 something like that for germanium etc so it is negligible it is considered as zero now if vd diode voltage is zero this is vd not v not vd diode voltage okay vd if vd is zero again write on the kvl just we are solely depending on the kvl i am not 
creating any like much complex system over here. Simply I am writing the KV. What I will get? Minus VL plus V0 plus 0 which is equal to VD. Let me write as VD as of now. Then later I will substitute as VD is equal to 0. So, can I write V0 is equal to V0 is equal to simply VL minus VD which is equal to VL minus VD which is equal to VL approximately. This is minus 0 which is equal to simply VL. So, see that during the off state the output voltage is equal to inductor voltage and during the on state the output voltage is equal to input voltage minus inductor voltage. So, these two you have to get clear idea that during the on state what is going to be happen, during the off state what is going to be happen. Okay. So, these are the two important things one should understand. Now, just let me give you some basic idea of the waveforms also, how does it look like, some important waveforms. So, for which just I am taking first is the switching action, this is the time t and this is the switch state, let me write as switch state, means whether it is on or off, ok. So, for which let me take a certain time period as on and a remaining time period as off, like this, this is one time period. Then after this again same thing going to be continue like on and again off. So, like this. So, this is one time period t, this is next to same time interval t and so on. So, this is the on state to t on, this is the off state to t off. The switch will be on here 0 to let us say t on and t on to t off this time interval is off state. Okay. Right. So, now uh, let me uh, right. So, what I will do is that um, can I take in this way that V input V input, uh, yeah. Mm. I, I can make in this way that during the on state, during the on state, the input voltage is Vi. Let me use different color. The input voltage is Vi and during the off state the input is disconnected from the circuit, yes or no, see here. There is no input for here, I can say input is 0 during the off state for this rest of the circuit, whereas for this on state the input applied here is what V input which is equal to Vi, whereas here the V input is equal to 0 we are not applying any input voltage. So, that I am just trying to during the on state the input is V i, during the off state the input is V 0 means 0, 0 voltage and same thing going to be repeated. Just I am trying to give let us say 2 cycles. So, again on state it is V i, again off state it is 0 like this. Okay. This is what the VI, VI voltage 0 to VI during on and during off it is simply 0 volts. Okay. Now, just uh, think of, think of that what will be the V naught, V naught during the on state, during the on state for which actually uh, we need to get the inductor voltage also here as like this. Can I write inductor voltage as L into dI by dt? 
L into di by dt. Voltage across the inductor is. If I know the current, this current I, then I can write VL as L into di by dt. That means once I know the slope of the current at which it is rising, I can estimate how much is the inductor voltage. How much is the inductor voltage? But so involving this VL in this expression will become much complex of this discussion. So I want to keep at the surface level this discussion. So I will not involve VL directly over here. Instead of that, just I will try to give something like this. During the on state, what will be the output? And during the off state, what will be the output? That I want to give. Okay. So see here that. Uh, One more important point you should make clear is that, yeah. So yes, okay. Let me give you through this diagram itself. So now our main objective is to see the V naught output voltage, and V naught is. Let me write directly as V i minus V l, some value which is constant of course, but if V l is changing. So this V not also changes. If V L is changing, V not also changes. So on average, let us consider. I am considering average value. So on top, I will be putting, uh, let us say, some cap. Cap means average value. Let me write average value. Average value. So what happens is that V not is some value which is positive, but definitely lesser than V I. Okay, see here, definitely lesser than V L. Why? Because V L will be there, which is subtracted from this. Clear? V L. So now I can say, average value of this output is definitely lesser than input voltage over on time interval positive. And over off time interval, try to see V naught is equal to V L, but is it positive? That you need to take care. So actually, see how we considered V L during the on state is left side positive, right side negative. Or let me say, this is coil one side, this is coil one dash side. Okay, coil one to one dash. So I write here. V one one dash is equal to V L inductor voltage. Whereas here, see that in the off state, in the off state, V one one dash is equal to minus V L. Yes or no? See, where is one? This side. Where is one dash? Other side. So one to one dash voltage is equal to minus V L. That means this is the negative voltage. So this whatever I am getting here, V L is actually negative. So I should represent that negative side, which is, let me put over here, as like this. And again for the positive half cycle, positive time period, this will keep on continuous. So let me write here clearly that this is V naught is equal to V i minus V L. Whereas for the off period V naught is equal to V L, but negative. That should be understood by default. This is what the negative. This is zero level. Okay. If you get confused, just remove this V L and always represent this as plus V L only this side. Then you can you will get V naught is equal to minus V L. How? Just can I show little uh, calculation as like this? So or uh, let me keep as it is, and let me use different color to represent this. Uh, yes. So let me use red color. If I will consider this as a positive, other side as a negative. Still same VL means the same VL I will be carry forward for the off state also with same polarity. What I will get is that 
what I will get is that KVL has so plus VL plus V0 plus VD is equal to 0. Got my point? With respect to red color polarity, this one. Then in this case, so I will get V0 is equal to minus VL. I hope this may give you better sense than the previous one. But both are correct. Both are correct. But one thing you need to understand, like how you consider the actual polarity, that is very important. Okay. So, if it is with respect to red color polarity assumption, you will get V0 as negative. Or if it is with respect to green color polarity, you will get this expression. Both are correct, but whichever sign you consider. In some literature, you may see this red color polarity or green color polarity. But both are correct. But one thing you should understand that here, very carefully, this is negative portion. So, in this way, you can see that always the output voltage is lesser than the input voltage. This is what the step down converter, which we call as a buck converter which we call as a buck converter is this clear is there any doubt is this clear Okay, so if not, so let us stop here today and let us see the extension of this DC-DC converter which is the step up converter which we call as a boost converter that we see in the next class. Okay, so here in this first we seen our main objective is to get the output voltage to be either greater than the input voltage or the less than the input voltage. To achieve this objective, transformer does not work as because we are in the DC system now. Now I need the DC output voltage from a DC input voltage which is not possible with the help of transformers. So we are going with the DC DC converters. What is the DC DC converters means input is the DC output also DC. So I need to vary the output. So the output may be higher than the input or lower than the input. Based on that feature, it may be step down converter or step up converter. So, majorly in this converters, we will have the input, this portion, and also we will have the output portion. And output portion is associated with the capacitor in parallel to the load. Input is a DC source directly. And apart from this input voltage source and output load and capacitor, we have basically three elements. Just try to focus on these three. Let me let me uh, segment. Uh, let me put the dot lines here. These portions. Just you try to carefully observe. This portion. This portion is more or less constant for any kind of converters inside this. This is what the basic converter. This portion is what the converter. Converter. What kind of converter is this? Based on the arrangement of the switch, diode and inductor, it forms different converters. If it is the switch is on the source side, inductor is on the load side and in the middle the diode, such a things will form the buck converter. So this, there is no logic that but just once we connect in this way, we can observe that the output voltage is lesser than the input, thereby we are getting step down feature. That's why we are calling this as a buck converter. So this kind of configuration, you will get the step down feature at the output V0. So this switch diode inductor combination play important role in producing the different output voltage that is lesser than the input. Okay. And one more is the switch that how this switch is going to be operated. How long this switch is on, how long this switch is off. So this sometimes we may use different uh, uh, like uh, terminology as duty ratio, duty ratio or duty cycle. So 
let us say uh, duty ratio what is mean by duty ratio is the on time period divided by total time period so that is how much duration the switch is on with reference to the total time period which is t on plus t off so this these are the additional things which you will see like in higher classes but so this information as of now i hope it's not required but try to understand whenever you see in the literature some this kind of notations also try to understand now see based on the nature of the on and off sometimes source is connected to the load side sometimes source is isolated from the load side and based on that we will get the average output voltage lesser than the input voltage that is what the whole summary of this and the key important feature is just writing the kvl equation nothing so simply kvl equation these two these two are very important okay so thank you